Hey guys, Maritza here. I'm doing my um, the transition episode seven for you today. I um, this morning I got <laughs> really interrupted from my morning ritual of meditation and, and listening to um, Christian music by a, a woman who I'm not quite sure if they identify as trans or gender queer, but she was trying to reprimand me. And asking why do I have to go against the trans community? That why is it that I that I have to uh, try to force people to see my way and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and she wanted to know what was that moment that made me see after 16 years that I go to church or this, that, and the other. And I, I kindly answered and I said to her, I've been at this, you're correct, for 16 years in seeing how this does not work by observing many in the community. And I don't want to pigeonhole anyone. I don't want to put anyone in a box, but let's say that a lot of the people that I've observed that I've run across that I've been friends with are not happy. They're not happy at all. They've done everything. And it goes, they go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. And as soon as they reach a milestone, they need another milestone. So the disease is the disease of boredom, the disease of escapism, but it has nothing to do with gender. I want to read a study, or actually, you know, several studies, two of the more important studies that should be discussed, you know, when addressing these uh, issues on transsexuality and transsexual surgery. There was a study done in 2015 that found 180 transsexual teenagers, 106 female to male, 74 male to female, had a two-fold to three-fold increase in risk of psychiatric disorders including depression, anxiety, social ideation, suicide attempts, self-harm without lethal intent, and both inpatient and outpatient mental health treatment compared to a con control group. The study was done in Reisner SL in 2015. The largest study of post-surgical transsexual was an analysis of over 300 people in Sweden over the past 30 years. The study demonstrated that persons after sex reassignment have considerably higher risk for mortality, suicidal behavior, and psychiatric morbidity than the general population, according to Dean 2011. A human being is not a disembodied self sitting behind a control panel in the mind, possessing some indomitable intuition about its true sex, which incidentally always <laughs> just so happens to draw on culturally specific images and ideals of embodied masculinity and femininity. We are our bodies, and these bodies are, aside from some rare and sexual exception, male or female. Gender is a social construct, okay? We have to realize that. It's made up. It's what we created to get people to fit in little boxes, right? So I wrote this article um, that was pretty much, um, I guess, inspired by this morning's conversation go. The article is entitled Missing the Mark, the Beast in Control. So I, I start talking about this girl in, in, on the uh, blog. So I got approached by a gender confused, possibly FTM identified person on Facebook who is from Peru. She tries to grapple with me, informing me that I appear angry and that Christians need to teach about God's love. Well, first of all, I'm a follower of Yeshua, of Christ. I don't much like labels. I've been living by labels most of my life, therefore I'm done with them. I do share many beliefs with my brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, but I want to, but I don't want to be labeled a Christian because not all Christians follow the teachings of Christ the way that I feel should be followed. I've been reading my Bible and also started reading the Nagar Hammadi scripture. I'm seeking my father and I want to live the remainder years according to his laws. She asked me what led to my change and why I'm going against the trans community. I answer the trans community in and of itself are the ones that created my change in how I viewed the whole situation. The list for this is a mile long. No one's ever happy. And I find it offensive on how they find it appropriate to force this on everyone. They badger the feminists and the Christians for disagreeing with their trans ideology. Yet it's so funny because they can't see what they themselves do yet they love to point fingers and ram their views down everyone's throats. 
I proceeded to tell her that after 16 years of living as a trans man and 22 years as a lesbian, a total of 36 years in the LGBT lifestyle, I find that there is no true happiness on either road, nor is there any true functionality based on how my life turned out and what I see from others. Now I can't and I won't make a blanket statement. I've been known to do so and I've been shamed for it. But I can say that what I've experienced and seen is that it does not work, okay? It doesn't work. People become homeless, lose their jobs, family, children, and friends. They get ridiculed by society. Some turn to drugs, alcohol, and are promiscuous. They get AIDS and other venereal diseases. The lifestyle does not does take a toll on people. Now I know many hate to see the word lifestyle attached to their preferences. However, if we are honest, and I hope we can be, the definition of lifestyle goes as follows. The way in which a person or group lives, a way of life, a way of living, a manner of living that is not considered the norm. A typical scenario is a man and a woman. They reproduce and the cycle continues. Furthermore, the definition reads, the habits, attitudes, tastes, and standards that together constitute the mode of living of an individual or group who partake in an unhealthy lifestyle choice, lifestyle advertising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Note, I'm not judging, just pointing out facts, truth, and observations, which neither are judgment or hate. We need to stop gaslighting and intimidating people who do not agree with you. It does not work and only makes people angry and want to rebel against you further. Now let's really dive into this, shall we? Most gays and lesbians come from a dysfunctional home or at least a home where parents were not willing to understand that their son or daughter was born different. Now different does not mean born in the wrong body or that you need to be attracted to the same sex be because you don't feel like a regular boy or a girl. Usually the shaming, sexual abuse, lack of parental communication and or support can lead us to the path of experimentation with the same sex. For women seeking the affection of one's mother who at times lacked the skill to be as we saw fit, this in no way means our mothers are bad mothers. It means that as a child with neurological and psychological needs, we need it more. There are many factors that figure into the sexual and gender um, system that does not have your best interest. I'm sorry. This sexual and gender anomaly, none of which are being addressed and instead pushed along by a dysfunctional system that does not have your best interest. We can blame an overly demanding father leading us in a path of perfectionism, which creates a slew of problems, including our own self-worth and lack of self-esteem issue. But to claim that we are born this way is a false claim. We develop coping skills based on our surrounding, based on our treatment, and based on how we see the world. Our brains are very plastic and they adapt, changes, and create scenarios as it sees fit. Mothers mold their infants for the first five years. In addition, if a child has an influx of androgen or lack thereof, their mannerism may take on a more feminine or masculine approach. However, though, the molding of the parent also makes a massive difference to how the child presents. But again, this does not mean you're born wrong or need to have sexual relationship with the same sex. The sexual attraction is, is led by how a person feels they fit into the world or based on the traumas we have endured. You must be honest with yourself. Did you rebel when your mother pushed on you with more feminine things? You know, I know that happened to me when you were experimenting with more boy types, toys or clothing. This is normal for a child to experiment. If a parent places too much emphasis on this, it will make the child rebel and hence the beginning of sexual and gender confusion. If you were sexually molested, you may be having difficulty letting your guard down around men. The triggers from the molestation need to be worked on to free yourself from the aversion you have created. In my humble opinion, no one is born gay or trans. We are born with personalities and we are traumatized throughout our youth and we therefore cope accordingly and use poor coping skills to get along with life. There are many gays and lesbians who have dropped the lifestyle and are now living happy lives as heterosexuals or asexuals. There are many detransitioners who are living as the sex they were born as. I'm here as a survivor of both both way of thinking. I was a lesbian and then a trans guy. To tell you this was not my path to take, but it was placed upon me due to many circumstances that I faced growing up. I'm glad that I was able to work through it all. And I'm here to say that you can heal. Open your heart to healing. 
Let Father in, and he will do the rest. You must do the work first, though. Carry your cross, heal from your childhood traumas, and keep the communication line open with your heavenly parent. What do you have to lose? Are you afraid of healing? Is this lifestyle so important to you? What would you be without it? The ego will take you down to the pit. It will destroy you and it will lie to you all to gain control over you. So I hope all that my words reach your heart. They're not meant to be critical of you. They're not meant to hurt you. They're not meant to judge you. They're meant to get you to think. It's important for us to be honest, to really be honest not to create scenarios, not to create coping mechanisms, not to, you know, to get angry at one another because you said, she said, no. Let's have an honest dialogue. I really, really and truly want to get at the heart of all of this. And I want this fiasco because this whole trans agenda has become a fiasco to come to an end. There are people out there that are intersex. There's no doubt about that, but intersex and transsexuality are two different things, not even close. Intersexual people have chromosome anomalies. Transsexual people have mental, I don't wanna use the word disorder, but have mental angst because of childhood trauma, because of the way their brain was developed according to their environment. And now they're, they're in this flight or fight response because they're trying to find where they fit in society. But you were not born wrong. You're perfect the way you are. You're loved. Now the question is, do you love yourself? And do you love yourself enough to leave yourself alone and to work through your issues that led you to where you are today? All right, guys, I appreciate you very much. I love you all every single one of you, but please remember to love yourselves too. Goodbye.